Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Okay, for today's video, I'm going to discuss AMD's recent announcement to discontinue support for older chipsets with their upcoming Ryzen 4000 series, codenamed Zen 3. Okay, so for those of you who aren't yet up to speed, in the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X press deck, AMD included a slide that seemed to indicate that the B350, X370, B450, and X470 chipsets wouldn't support future Ryzen processors. Rather, support for future CPU generations, such as the upcoming Ryzen 4000 series, would be limited to motherboards donning a 500 series chipset, so X570 boards and the upcoming B550 boards. Some people took this to mean that 300 and 400 series boards would still support Zen 3 processors through unofficial support, given that the AMD slide clearly claims that 300 series boards don't support Ryzen 3000 series processors, when in fact they do. The situation here though is quite different, at least that's what AMD is telling us. While AMD didn't officially support Zen 2 processors on 300 series motherboards, they did invest engineering time to make it work, and quite crucially provided motherboard makers with the necessary AGESA code for the support. It was then optional for the board makers to implement that update and support Zen 2 processors on their older 300 series boards. Given no AIB wanted to look inferior to their competitors and alienate their own customers, they all implemented this beta BIOS, as AMD calls it, and as a result, the Ryzen 9 3950X will work on most B350 motherboards. However, AMD's told us that this kind of beta BIOS option won't exist for Zen 3, and therefore the necessary code won't be made available to board partners, and at this point in time there are no plans to open up support for upcoming Ryzen 4000 series processors on 300 and 400 series motherboards. So that's where we're at right now. AMD saying it won't happen, period. No ifs and or buts. But could AMD change their stance between now and the release of Zen 3? Well, as I just said, they're saying they won't. So I guess the only chance we have for change is if the community has a really poor reaction to this news. Okay, so let's start with why AMD is limiting support for the upcoming Ryzen 4000 series to B550 and X570 motherboards. In an official AMD blog post covering this very issue, they said the following. AMD has no plans to introduce Zen 3 architecture support for older chipsets. While we wish we could enable full support for every processor on every chipset, the flash memory chips that store BIOS settings and support have capacity limitations. Given these limitations and the unprecedented longevity of the AM4 socket, there will inevitably be a time and place where a transition to free up space is necessary. The AMD 500 series chipsets are that time. I've got to say, we feel that is a very disappointing response from AMD, and it's really a garbage reason. Firstly, there are 400 series boards with larger capacity BIOSes for that very reason. Uh, these boards were designed to ensure future CPU support, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. The second reason is one I discussed quite some time ago when it first became apparent that BIOS capacity issues would be a problem moving forward. My idea was for AMD and its board partners to offer users with older 300 and 400 series boards multiple BIOS options. Have a BIOS with first, second, and third gen support like what we have now, and then another version that drops first and maybe even second gen support in favour of third and fourth gen support. This is a relatively easy solution and certainly possible to implement. In our opinion, the real reason why AMD's axing support is likely because they don't have enough resources internally to support Zen 3 on older boards. That's obviously not something AMD wants to admit to, but it's almost certainly the truth. It seems a lot less likely that they're just wanting to sell more motherboard chipsets, as many people are suggesting. Claiming that BIOS capacity is the reason for axing support is just a bad reason, and as I said, there are ways around that issue if AMD really wished to maintain support. What they should have said is something like, we wish we could support Zen 3 on older motherboards. However, in pushing the boundaries of CPU performance, we ran into compatibility complications with boards designed for earlier Ryzen architectures. Focusing on adding support for older motherboards would compromise our ability to deliver a high performance, stable platform on 500 series boards. So we decided to end support for older platforms with the upcoming generation. Anyway, AMD is going with the BIOS capacity story, so let's just move on. Something I don't want to get too caught up in is what AMD has or hasn't promised. And by that I mean, from day one, AMD said a key feature of the AM4 platform is socket stability, as they would be using the same socket till at least 2020. They also claimed as recently as a year ago, and I quote the very first sentence of the May 2019 blog post. With the launch of the AM4 platform in 2016, we at AMD made a commitment to maintain and support Socket AM4 through 2020. So while that doesn't name chipsets, they do use the word maintain, 
and that very strongly implies that they will maintain motherboard support, so we feel at the very least AMD has misled its customers. I also find it interesting that some people are saying AMD told us this would happen when they claimed AM4 support until 2020. For us, it's ambiguous whether that's until the start or end of the year. It also only applies to the AM4 socket, not the chipsets, as there was never promised chipset support. And in any case, the AM4 socket is continuing through 2020. It's just a bizarre justification, to be honest. Anyway, like I said, I don't want to waste too much time discussing and potentially arguing about a list because frankly it doesn't change too much for me. And rather, I want to talk about why I think AMD's plans to axe support for older boards moving forward is crap. Actually, I should be a little more specific here. I think axing support for the 400 series boards is a crap move. The 300 series boards though, not so much. Yeah, it's not ideal, but if you bought a 300 series motherboard, particularly a cheap B350 model, I feel you've gotten your money's worth at this point. The fact that a relatively inexpensive B350 board now has the option to support 12 and even 16 core processors with relatively large IPC gains compared to the first gen Ryzen parts, well, that's unheard of. For example, if you were to tell someone buying a B350 board back in 2017 that in a few years there'll be 12 and 16 core parts offering solid IPC gains and massively improved power consumption and they'll work on these very boards, they'd have probably laughed at you. After all, the previous nine years had seen nothing but Intel quad-core CPUs for the mainstream platform, so AMD really should be commended for what they've done with Ryzen. So, if you have a 300 series motherboard, you should probably consider yourself lucky and appreciate what AMD's been able to achieve. However, if you bought a 400 series board, particularly if you did so after the release of the Ryzen 3000 series, then I think you have the right to be more than a little pissed off, especially given AMD's reason for axing support. If AMD knew BIOS sizes were going to be a problem, and as a result would have to act support, why didn't they make this clear when X570 boards started showing up? Instead, they continued to promote 400 series boards, stating that Ryzen 3000 CPUs would perform just as well on last gen B450 and X470 products. Therefore, they were essentially saying there's no need to invest in an expensive X570 board if you don't require PCIe 4.0 support. Fast forward to today and that's not really true though, is it? The key feature of the X570 chipset is future CPU support, namely for Zen 3. Had you known this, I'm sure many of you would have spent $40 more on something like the ASUS Tough Gaming X570 over the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. This suggests to me at the time that AMD didn't know how they were going to tackle future CPU support, so they were kind of just winging it. I mean, it would have been stupid for AMD not to advertise X570 as the only chipset to support future CPUs, given the only other really selling point was PCIe 4.0. And that's a feature that 90% of users don't need or use, at least for the first year or so. So we know AMD didn't communicate any of this to their customers, either because they didn't want to, or at the time they didn't know what the future plans were. And I'm starting to think it's the latter, as it appears board partners were in the dark as well. Having seen the issues caused by bar sizes for the Zen 2 launch, MSI went ahead and relaunched most of their 400 series lineup with the Mac series. The Max boards were identical to the original models in every way with the exception of the BIOS chip, which was upgraded from a 16 megabyte capacity to 32 megabytes, allowing these boards to comfortably support all Zen processors. So naturally, those of you seeking future CPU support on a more affordable B450 board went with something like the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max, and we know many of our viewers did exactly that. And that means those of you who bought one of these boards over the past few months will no doubt be feeling very shafted at this point. In fact, this decision by AMD has landed MSI in some rather hot water as they clearly advertise their Max range with support for future AM4 processors. I mean, that was the entire point of the series. And not to throw MSI under the bus here, but in their own blog post, they said they recommend grabbing a B450 Max motherboard if you want a value-oriented motherboard that'll support not only the latest AMD releases, but will also have you covered for all future AM4 products. Yikes. Needless to say, MSI was blindsided by this recent decision by AMD and are no doubt just as unhappy as many of you. So AMD might have to reconsider their decision to act support if they want to avoid legal action being taken against at least one of their partners. Of course, you could just blame MSI for shooting their mouth off and guaranteeing something they had no business guaranteeing, but we really don't know what was or wasn't communicated to them by AMD a year ago. And it's hard to give AMD the benefit of the doubt, 
given how all of this has played out. Not to mention, they just released the Ryzen 3 lineup with the R3 3100 and R3 3300X. I mean, what was the point of releasing these new budget Zen 2 processors without first releasing the B550 chipset? Given this new information, who is going to spend about $100 on a B450 motherboard to take advantage of these new Ryzen 3 processors if those boards don't support at least one more generation of AM4 processors? I mean, that's just a horrible investment at this point. The 3100 and 3300X aren't exactly upgrade options for anyone who already owns a Ryzen processor. I mean, sure, maybe an R3 1200, but that's about it. So it seems really strange to release these new quad-core Ryzen 3 parts before B550 motherboards hit shelves. But then you really could say that regarding all the Ryzen 3000 series parts, and given this new information, it makes the B550 delay all the more bizarre. It's been suggested to me by a few reliable industry sources that the B550 chipset was delayed multiple times, and in the end it's believed AMD decided to hold off until Intel had released their 10th gen core series, using the B550 chipset as an opportunity to steal some of Intel's thunder and spoil their more affordable B460 release. And if that is the case, AMD has played themselves and screwed over their customers in the process. Now, I've seen a lot of people saying things like, AMD is just as bad as Intel now, they've tasted success and they're ready to screw us over. Personally, I think that's a pretty bad take for a few reasons. Firstly, the degree of compatibility AMD has managed here is worlds better than anything Intel has provided in recent history. Granted, those who bought a B450 motherboard have now unexpectedly ended up with just a single generation's worth of support, but at least they have more than just quad-core processors to choose from. So again, I have to give credit to AMD here. In just a few short years, they've progressed desktop CPU performance beyond everyone's expectations. Where AMD's messed up again is in their failure to really let reviewers, and more importantly customers, know what their plans are. At least with Intel, we knew we were getting a tick, then a tock, and then a bugger off and buy a new motherboard. Though again, I will just say that people who bought a 400 series board at or after the Zen 2 release did get screwed over here. They bought in at the end of the road and they didn't even know it till a few days ago. So at the end of the day, Tim and myself are happy about this move from AMD and we strongly urge them to reconsider and at least open up support for those who have bought 400 series motherboards. Apparently we can influence AMD pricing, so hopefully we can finally use that power for good. Uh, let's just hope that those powers translate beyond inflating prices of products we deem too good to be true. But in all seriousness, we really do hope AMD makes a change here. All that said, it sounds like most of you don't really care all that much based on feedback we received in a recent poll. Just 25% of the 50 plus thousand people who voted think this move by AMD sucks and they're disappointed. The vast majority agree that it is unfortunate, but ultimately they aren't all that upset, while 15% think the move is fine and are prepared to upgrade their motherboard. Now, obviously those of you who've been holding out for B550 or pulled the trigger on an X570 board, you don't really care. If anything, this just reinforces that you made the right decision. Those who bought a 300 series board years ago probably aren't all that phased either. As I said, they've done extremely well given how Zen 2 turned out. So really, it's just those who bought a 400 series board that'll be upset, and in particular, those who bought in the last year. So in a nutshell, Tim and myself think AMD's decision to abruptly axe support for 400 series chipsets is a crap move, and we strongly urge them to reconsider. And I would like to just quickly say for those of you who disagree with us, and in particular the AMD fanboys who will no doubt be outraged that we're going against AMD's decision here, it is worth keeping in mind that the decision to axe support has no negative impact on us. Rather, our decision to fight for those who bought 400 series boards could actually risk jeopardizing our relationship with these companies. For us here at Harbour Unboxed, having new motherboards to test out and feature on the channel provides us with more content. And if anything, AMD has increased interest in B550 motherboards, ensuring that that content will perform even better. So for us, it's a win-win. That being the case, we really are looking out for those of you who just purchased a B450 motherboard or even purchased one since the Ryzen 3000 series arrived and you are under the impression that because it is a current generation product, that it would support at least one more generation of Ryzen processors. And I think with a complete lack of B550 motherboards, that seemed like a pretty safe assumption to make. We also don't think it's unreasonable to request AMD open up support for the 400 series chipsets. And we of all people understand and appreciate the challenges AMD's faced along the way in trying to maintain broad platform compatibility. In mid 2018, for example, we went against those calling on us to give AMD a hard time over the Raven Ridge APU release, creating a video titled why AMD's superior compatibility could end and it's all your fault. That video is actually quite interesting to go back and watch now given how things have played out. 
AMD also saw further backlash from customers with the release of Zen 2. People complaining about early BIOS support and older motherboards created nothing but headaches for AMD. And this came at a time when they were still trying to iron out the X570 chipset. And then, of course, there was also the silly drama surrounding the biggest non-issue of them all, people missing out on 25 to 50 megahertz of their boost clock. On that note, I'm actually quite surprised by just how much noise was made about the boost clock issue when people are seemingly okay with AMD just telling them out of the blue that the 400 series board they just bought actually has no future CPU support. But maybe that's not the case. As I said, I suspect 400 series owners are quite upset. It's just a case where this issue doesn't affect everybody. Moving forward, AMD says that the B550 and X570 chipsets will support Zen 3 processors, but beyond that, we are completely in the dark. Is this the end of the AM4 platform? Will Zen 4 adopt DDR5 and move to a new socket? If so, why break compatibility with the final CPU release? It seems like the worst possible way to end the AM4 platform. We could be looking at a situation where the 400 series boards were good for just two generations, and then the succeeding 500 series also valid for just two generations, and that would make AMD just as bad as Intel, at least in terms of platform compatibility. And on that note, I'm gonna end the video here. I'm still waiting for AMD to address quite a few questions we had for them regarding things like the multiple BIOS options and why they didn't make it clear that they were ending support with the 400 series chipsets when Zen 2 was released. And yeah, as I said, there's quite a few other questions. So hopefully AMD can get back to us on those. We're also waiting on a few uh, answers from AIB. So if we get all those through and they're worth talking about, then yeah, we'll have a follow-up video that discusses that. But that is going to do it for this video, as I said. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys do appreciate this content and enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Uh, we also have Patreon where you can support us there and become more involved with the channel. We've got an exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, Q&As, and a few other cool things. But anyway, that's that. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.